28. Matter of fact, hold, hold it. I want to pull Hebrews 10 real quick. I just want to get one script. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Yep. Because we got people that don't even believe in Jesus. Right? So, <laughs> so how can you get saved or how can you have salvation when you don't even believe in Christ? Like, it, don't make, it don't make sense. He don't believe in the Old Testament. Take this, man. First guy didn't believe New Testament. You know, you know, you know, Deuteronomy chapter no. 28, verse 68. This is the, this the madness of our people. He don't, he don't believe in the New Testament. I mean, Old Testament. But you got a brother that just left. Don't believe in the New Testament. Our people, black, black people are crazy. You're the children of Israel, black people. Black people are the children of Israel, my brother. Read verse 28 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. And the Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Bible says God will smite us with madness. You got one black man saying, I don't believe in the Old Testament. Then you got another black man saying, I don't believe in the New Testament. Official that say we not the people or any artificial that conjured up an image that is contrary to the scriptures. All that be like polished brass, lightning bolts coming from his business. You can approach the throne, but not until I extend the golden scepter. That's right, stay in line. Watch me have the mind. I'll pray to the most I saw. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you were here and sir, you understanding it. You know, because it's a big, it's a big uh, thing for that, right? When we come back and keep God's commandments, right? Because all of this happened to us because of our disobedience to God, right? So what were you at? Yeah, read that, read that. No, First Kings eight. First Kings eight. Then what we gotta do? Read that. First Kings chapter eight and verse forty-seven. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captive. So, the Bible says, God's chosen people, they have to rethink themselves in the land where they were carried captive. Right here in America, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we were carried captive here. We were slaves here in America. So, God tells us we got to bethink ourselves, especially with all that's going on in the world. This is the most important time we have to rethink ourselves. Right, Rio? And repent. And do what? And repent. And repent. That's what we got to do. We got to repent from our sins. You see what I'm saying? Read on. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives. See that? We got to, we got to, we got to pray to the Lord right here in the land where he took us captive. Read. No, this is. We, we have sinned. Well, carried them captive saying, uh -huh. we have sinned Read. and have done perversely. Read. We have committed wickedness. Read. And so return unto thee with all their hearts and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers. So that's the step that we have to take. We, have, we first have to remember who we are. We got to we gotta make supplications to the Lord, and we got to repent. That, that, that's the order of things. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times we be in the church, we be praying, don't know who we praying to. We, we praying to white Jesus in the church, but yet, when we go back to our communities, we hate each other, when we kill each other, we do all manner of evil to each other. You see what I'm saying? Even brothers who know so-called the truth, 
they go against it, right? So watch this. Now go to Leviticus 19, you gotta get that. I'm gonna show you a law according to God. Because the same thing that happened back then, the same thing that happened today. Brothers have hatred for the young people because he can't do the things that they do, right? Free that. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt anyways rebuke thy neighbor. See that? God said you gotta rebuke your neighbor. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. See that? God said you can't hold no grudge against the children of your people. Right? Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So God said so you got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. But in our community, that's one of the hardest things for us to do. It's to love another black man like we love ourselves. We have, we have so more respect for, for, the, for the white man, for the Arab man, for the Chinese man. We have so more respect for them before we show to somebody that looks just like us. Bring it out! You see what I'm saying? So that shows that hatred that we got for ourselves. It's a deep rooted hatred that we have for ourselves that we'll go against each other. And they did that to us. You know, they did a lot of it to us in slavery. They put us on slave ships. They made us work the fields, you know, and they put things together to, to further that hatred that we had for each other. You see what I'm saying? So, you've been out here for a minute. Did, did you kind of get uh, the gist of what we're doing? Do you kind of understand? Like, okay, so I'm I'm, 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 I'm put you to the test now. A son. A son is Muslim. I'll say son. Yeah. Are you are you Muslim? Right, right. Okay, okay. So, so, what you've been learning out here, right? What would you, what would your race be, according to God? Your race. Yes, sir. Say that again. Are oh, you saying Islam? No, that's not it. Uh, your race is what we've been going over. You from the twelve tribes of Israel? That's who you from. Uh, you ever heard of you ever heard of a man named Abraham? Yeah. You heard of Abraham? Abraham had a son named Isaac, right? Isaac had two sons. You know their name? It was Jacob and Esau, right? Jacob is where we come from. Uh, Genesis, Genesis, uh, thirty-two twenty-eight, or is it twenty-eight thirty-two? Thirty-two twenty-eight. I'm gonna show you something. Yeah, yes, sir. Watch this. Read it. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. So Jacob, which was Isaac's son, the angel told him, Your name is no more Jacob. Read. But Israel, for as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. So he changed his name from Jacob to Israel. It says a prince that has power with God. So that man Israel, he had those 12 sons that you see on that chart. From Judah, Benjamin, Levi on down, that's who Jacob had, or Israel had. But on the other side, is what they're called in America. American, black, African American, they called all these things, right? Hey bro, hey go, go do your studies bro, come on back another day, cause you're done bro, you're done, you're done. So, that's who, that's who we are, we the children of Israel. And according to the Bible, all of this happened to us because of our disobedience. And I'm going to show you that. Go do Rum 28. Do Rum 28. Matter of fact, hold, hold it. I want to post Hebrews 10 real quick. I just want to get one script. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Because we got people that don't even believe in Jesus. Right? So, so how can you get saved or how can you have salvation when you don't even believe in Christ? It don't make, it don't make sense. Read it. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never without sacrifice. So it says the law. The law, the law of animal sacrifice. Sacrificing animals. What did it say? For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of those things can never with those sacrifices, which they offer year by year, continually make the comments that are too perfect. So the scripture just says, those sacrifices that the children of Israel was offering, God said it couldn't make them perfect. Read. Verse 4. For it is not possible the blood of bulls and of goats should take... For it is... 
It is not. Verse 4, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Oh, See that? The Bible says it is not possible. It is not possible right. that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. It couldn't make us perfect. Right. But we still got people. It's amazing. People in 2023 still think that they can take a goat that they got in their damn cage to, to, to a farmer in Vicksburg to sacrifice. It makes no sense. You crazy. He, he, he crazy. He, he crazy. Read. Verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. And burn so the Lord prepared a body for me. Christ's body was prepared to come and die to give us that, that uh, repentance from sin that we needed. To give us that grace period that we need. Right. So now go back to Deuteronomy 28. I'm J-Rock. So, so, how you doing, J-Rock? So, what you about to say? Hey, you know a little bit about Deuteronomy 28. He said there's slavery in the Bible, but I don't know if that's that. Okay, it's slavery in the Bible, but do you know who it was talking about? Because this is what I'm just about to go into with him. Do you know who it was talking about? The Israelites. So, what happened to the Israelites? What happened to them? They disobeyed God. God, uh, they went to slavery. They went into slavery, right? So, who would those, who would, who would those people be today? Well, if you were looking for those same people, where would you go? Well, the Jews, they were scattered all throughout the earth. So where would they be? If I, if I wanted to go find one today, where could I go? What would I look for? Do you know? I'm going to show you. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the Lord told the children of Israel, this is going to happen if you don't listen to, right? To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So if the children of Israel didn't keep God's commandments, God was going to do something to them, right? Then all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he will curse them for being disobedient, right? Read on. Verse 16, curse shall thou be in the city. So the very first curse that he outlined was that the children of Israel was going to be cursed in the city. When you look throughout Vicksburg, right? So wait, 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 wait. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. So when you look throughout Vicksburg, right, and you look at the oppression that a certain race of people face in their neighborhoods, what's, what race of people, when you go in their neighborhood, is run down? Is is, is 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 impoverished, gangs, drugs. What race of people fit that? Poverty, crime. Well, who fits that? Black people, right? But if you go to the white side of town, right? They not doing as bad, right? They doing pretty good for themselves, right? So it don't fit them, right? It don't fit the Arab man. It don't fit the Chinese man. It fits black people, right? God said the children of Israel will be cursed in the city. Right? We don't control we don't control the school system. We don't control stores in our own neighborhood. That's nowhere else but in the black community. You're not gonna go to to a, a, a our Chinese neighborhood and see a black store owner. You're not gonna no. see that. You're not gonna go to a, a our a Arabian neighborhood and see a black man store in there. You're not gonna see it. Right. But in our community, we the only race of people. When you go to the black community, you got Arabs in the community, you got Chinese people in the community, and they hate our guts. They hate our guts. Only thing they want from us is our money. They'll, they'll cook their meat on a separate machine from the machine they use to cut the, the, the sour, the, the cold cuts, the bologna sandwiches, the, 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 the pork sausages and all that. They use a different machine to cut your meat on, but they, they eat a certain way, so they gonna cut their meat on another machine. Because they know that it ain't good for them. But they sell it to us though. You see what I'm saying? So that's being cursed in the city. The gun violence. You go you go to any neighborhood in Vicksburg, I ain't gonna say any, but you go to the impoverished ones, you go to the ones majority populated, populated by black people, and we got all the gun violence, we got all the thievery, we got all the adultery, we got all the single parent households, we got all of this stuff in our neighborhoods. That's God telling us 
that we would be cursed in the city. Read on. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And we will be cursed in the field. We right here in Mississippi. In the Delta, matter of fact. Did we not pick cotton in Mississippi? From sun up to sundown. Whether you're going up 61, you're coming up uh, down 20, you're going up 49, whatever the case may be. You see those fields back in the day, cotton was in those fields. Yes, and black people worked those fields, am I right? right? So God is telling us this is going to happen to his people. We're reading about God's chosen people, the children of Israel. I want you to remember that. All these things would happen to them for their disobedience. So, so far, we've been talking about black people, right? <laughs> so, this is lining up with black people, am I right? So, who are the children of Israel? There you go. We are the children of Israel. And we, we, and we went into slavery, colonization, oppression. We go through all these things because of the breaking of God's commandments. A lot of people, a lot of our people just celebrated Christmas. Right? So, what can I find December 25th at Jesus Christ's birthday in the Bible? What can I find it? That's idolatry. But yet, we went out and celebrated that. Saint Nick, that's Saint Nicholas. That's the Pope. Saint Nicholas. Pope Nicholas V. That's who that is. Black people celebrate when they talk about Santa Claus. Saint Nick. That's who they celebrate. They celebrating the man that took part in their slavery. Played a major role in it. But yet, our people went out and celebrated Christmas. They said, we do it for the kids. Well, God tell you we don't do it. But we'll go against God for our kids, and your kids don't even pay one bill in your house. Bring it out. But you're going to put your own child before God. That's why God said you're going to be cursed in the city, and you're going to be cursed in the field. Read, read verse 28. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness. So you see that? Another curse would be that God would smite us with madness. You saw that brother that just was up here? He said he don't, need, he don't even believe in Jesus. That's the Lord smite you with madness. You crazy as hell to be able to say, yeah, I believe in the Bible. I believe in the Old Testament, but I don't believe in Jesus. That's crazy. Black people... We are outside of our minds. Right. And guess what? That's the curse that God put upon us. Read on. And the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. It said madness, blindness, and astonishment of heart. So now, it spoke on blindness, right? When you look at our community, we got a Baptist church, we got a Lutheran church, we got a Episcopalian, we got a Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, we got every damn church under the sun in the black community, right? We got we got Mason lodges. We got we in Islam. We in all these type of things. We in gangs, right? You you GD vice lord blood crip. Th that's that blindness that the Lord put over us. When you reaching out for some type of help, you need somebody to take your hand and guide you, right? God said we went had it. When He smite us with madness and blindness, we gonna be in everything under the sun. Read. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Uh -huh. And thou shalt not prosper in thy way. So the Lord told us we wouldn't prosper in our ways. So all these things that I'm going over with you, I'm showing you that it all lines up with us. That's how you will identify who the children of Israel are in these last days. Because you see what's going on across seas, right? The Palestinians against uh, the Israelis. All of that is Bible prophecy. All of it is Bible prophecy. That's the beginning of World War III. You see what I'm saying? Is that Isaiah 34 and 8? Isaiah 34 and 8 real quick. Because these are the days that we've all been waiting for. We've been waiting on these days for Palestine to go against Israel. Closely fulfilling prophecy. They're going to they gonna kick World War III off. But a black man is here in Vicksburg. We're worried about hitting the club Friday night. We're worried about everything except the right thing. That's what we worry about. Why the world about to come to an end? We're worrying about big rims and sleeping around and hitting the club and turning up. That's all we worried about. Getting money. That's all we worried about. Why the world about to come to an end? Read that. 
Isaiah chapter 34, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. You see that? It says, for the controversy of Zion. What's the controversy? What, 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 what's the big deal about Zion? They trying to figure out who land does it belong to. Do it belong to the Israelis or do it belong to the Palestinians? Right? That's what they trying to figure out. Because before the Israelis got there, you had Palestine that was there, right? But they worked out a deal to let the Israelis come on in. So now in today's time, it's majority populated with so-called Jewish people, so-called Israelis. That's who majority stay in the land. But they fight back and forth over the land. Read that again. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. So God is mad. So all the killing you see going on over there, it's because God is upset. Right. Read. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. This is the beginning stages of it. That recompense for the controversy for Zion. Because the land don't belong to now one of them. The land belongs to us. The land belong that land of Israel over there in the so-called Middle East, it belongs to you, brother. Right. But God kicked us out of that land. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. The Lord kicked us out of that land because we were disobedient. So he kicked us out. We went into Africa, Spain, Europe, and eventually we got put on slave ship and shipped over here to America. Right? Read that. I'm going to show you that's a curse that God said what happened to his people. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Right and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Lord told us. He said, for your disobedience, he said, I'm going to put you into slavery again with slave ships. That's a curse that God said would happen to his chosen people. And we know we got put on slave ships. We got shipped over here to America. God said that would happen to us. Read it again for him. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How? By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So the Lord told us, right? God told us. Where we leaving from? We ain't coming back. <laughs> Have we been back? Where we been at? We've been right here in America. We were brought here as slaves. But our people, black people, they came here and got comfortable. They ain't got comfortable in oppression. You see what I'm saying? We're the only race of people that'll be that'll stay in a, in, in a completely ran down house, but somehow we find a way to get some 28 inch rims to put on a, a, on, a on an SUV. Bring it out. Bring it out. We're the only race of people that do that. How the scrub do your mind have to be? For you to see the impoverished of your people, but yet you spending your money on on on, on other stuff. Bring it out. He don't believe the old testament. Can't make this up. Take this, man. First guy to believe the new testament. Can't make this shit up. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. You see them, that's the madness of our people. He don't, he don't believe in the new testament. I mean old testament. But you got a brother that just left. Don't believe in the new testament. Our people, black, black people are crazy. You the children of Israel, black people. Black people are the children of Israel, my brother. Three verse 28 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. And the Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Bible says God will smite us with madness. You got one black man saying, I don't believe in the Old Testament. Now you got another black man saying, I don't believe in the New Testament. Read again. And the Lord shall smite thee with madness. That's what God had, believe it or not. They're not the only two. They're not the only two. You have black people that go to the church every Sunday and pray to white man Jesus. You got black Christians, mainly our women, black women, they go to church every Sunday and you can't find that nowhere in the Bible. So they ain't the only ones. You got people that go to church every Sunday faithfully and they pray to white man Jesus. They pray to seize the boat. They take their kids there. They take their young, they take their grandbabies there, and those same grandbabies that they take to the Christian church, they the same ones selling dope, shooting up the block, and impregnating every girl they see. The same men. That's the product of the Christian church. 
all the game bangers, all the dope dealers, all, all, all those men, they product of the Christian church because they mama took them to church. And the pastor said, you know what? You ain't got to do nothing God say. Love your neighbor. What? That's Old Testament, brother. You ain't got to love your neighbor. You ain't got to keep the Sabbath. They believe in Jesus and you'll be all right. That's what they say to us. But the product of that is a destroyed race of people. Right. Revelation 114. Let's get the true depiction of Jesus Christ. Because a lot of our people, I know you don't like it, a lot of our people hate the word of God. They hate it. Right. And they hate his son also. Watch this. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Right. His hair and his hairs were white like wool. So the Bible says Jesus Christ, it says the hair on his head and the hair on his face. What did it look like? What were white like wool. So Jesus Christ had woolly texture hair like you got. White, read. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read up. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So Jesus Christ had feet like brass, skin like brass, as if it burned in a furnace. So if you burn chicken, what color will it turn? Read up. It turned black, right? If you burn white rice, what color would it turn? <laughs> They're going to turn black, right? What does the Son of God, Jesus Christ, look like again? And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. That's a black man. Right. Jesus Christ, the greatest man to ever walk the face of the earth, was a black man according to the Bible. Yes, right. But guess what? That's something they'll never teach us. What? A black man is Jesus Christ? Hell no. I'd rather, play, I'd rather pray to that white man named uh, Caesar Bo. That's who our people pray to. You tell our people Jesus Christ is black, they say it don't matter. Everything matters. It's in the Bible, it matters. When they, when they, paint, when they paint Tupac and, and when, they, when, they, when they paint your favorite actor, when they paint them white, when they paint Malcolm X white in 20 years, when they make Martin Luther King white in, in, in 20 years, people going to have an uproar. They're going to be going crazy. Social media is going to be in a frenzy. What? They changed Mega Man from being black to white. But the greatest man to ever walk the face of the earth, they changed his skin color from black to white, and ain't nobody got a problem with it. Right ain't nobody got a problem with it. Right. That's why the main focus, you know what? We're going to destroy the black man. Right. We're going to put NBA young boy in his ear. We're going to put Lil Dirt. We're going to give him LeBron James. We're going to give them all these things and sell what they need to know. Look it out. We're going to give them Patrick Mahomes. We're going to give them all of these things. So now at a young age like these young men are, they learn to grow up and hate themselves. So by the time they're 13, 14, 15 years old, they up in school touching on little girls. They fighting each other. They doing all this because at a young age, they ain't been raised up to believe that they ain't nothing. By their mama, by their sister, by their grandmama, by the community, every, uh, every, everything that you can imagine is against the black man from a, from a very young age like this right here. So watch this. I'm going to ask y'all a question. I'm all of you. Give me 11. Over here. Come, come here, come here, come here. I want you to come over here. I want you to point to Jesus. Watch this, sir. Watch this. Point to Jesus. Come point to him. Put your hand on. I can't see it. Put your hand on. Okay, that, that's Jesus. Okay, what about you, young man? Come point to Jesus for me. Point to Jesus. Okay, he, you see how he pointed at that? So, you, you see what I'm saying, right? So, these are two young young men. Young, these kids. They pointed to a white man saying that that's Jesus. That's the destroy... That's the mind our enemies want us to have at a young age. Read Revelation 1 and 1 again. So I'm, before y'all leave, I want to show y'all what Jesus Christ actually looked like. Bring it up. Right? Read Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So when it says revelation, it says reveal. I'm about to reveal to you what Jesus looked like, okay? Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So what we're about to read, it was passed down so we can have it today. So skip down to verse 14. I want you to stay with me. Y'all listening? Okay, read. Verse 14. 
His head and his hairs were white like wool. Hey, can you pull a picture of a sheep up? So the Bible says Jesus Christ's hair, the hair of his head and the hair of his face was woolly. Do you know what wool feels like? Feel the top of your head. That's what wool feels like. So the same hair you got, guess who else had? Jesus had it, right? Right. So now, come here. The picture you pointed at, do we have hair like Jesus or do he have hair like Jesus? He got it, right? That, that That's not woolly tension hair, right? You see the picture right there? That's the picture of wool. You see that? So you see that, right? So the picture you pointed at, you see, you see, you see now? The picture you pointed at, it does not have coarse hair, woolly hair, right? Read you know. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read you know. And his feet like unto fine brass. So what color is brass? Who know what color brass is? There you go. Like this right here, right? Brass color, right? Copper color, right? Like like this key. So, so no, no, not grass. With a B. B R A S S. Brass, right? Gold is right. So the picture you pointed at, do his is his skin golden? It's not right. Whose skin look like? Whose skin look like golden? Whose skin golden? Got it. You are all right. You are all right. That 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 got goldish. Right, right. right? For real. As if they burn in a furnace. So, if I, young man right here, if you take something brown and burn it, what color will it turn? Gold. What? What color? What? So, what color was Jesus? What? There you go. So, so, Jesus Christ was a black man. He looked more like that picture on the end, right? You see that picture, young man right here? You see that picture on the end? Yes, that picture. The Bible describes Jesus Christ as that color. So now, if I were to ask you, what color is Jesus, what would you say? The black man, right? Well, what kind of hair? Woolly. What kind, what kind, okay? Woolly. Woolly hair. Like your hair. Right. Jesus Christ has your skin color. Right. You see that? Right. Proverbs 28, 19. Very low. It's your hair. So y'all understand That's that, right? That's right. So, I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all how important that is. Because there's something that... Rivers of living water. Guys, I have to Hey, I see you watching the video. Let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Matter of fact, won't you like, subscribe, and share. IUIC Mississippi burning. Like, subscribe, and share. Even comment. You be on the internet? What you watching on the internet? Honey. Come on back, come on back, huh? Say what? No, no, you keep that for you. You keep that. You keep that. So on your phone, on your tablet, right? You be you be on YouTube and all that, right? So it's important for you to look at the right things on YouTube, right? So watch this. Oh, right. yeah. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 where there is no vision the people perish you see that so what we're trying to do with you that, that, that's your mama your grandmother so what we're trying to do with all our people is to give our people that proper image that you need you, you, you never need it you never need to get on that get on out now get on out <laughs> so so, so, he so he this is what we're trying to show. No, 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 no. I got you. They come. So, the Bible said where there's no vision of people past, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you got the proper vision of Jesus Christ now, right? Which is what color? Black, Black man, right? Don't you ever forget that. That's right. When you, when you, when you, your mama, your, I mean your nana, you make sure you let her know. Y'all go to church? What day y'all go to church on? Sunday and Wednesday. Sunday and Wednesday, right? Give me Exodus 20. So I'm going to show y'all the right day they're supposed to go to church on. Mama, I'm showing them the right day they're supposed to go to church on. 
Where's your father? Uh, he at work. Huh? He at work. You got you, you stay with your father? No, they ain't got any. How they, they get here? They, 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 they got here some kind of way. No, no, don't say this. Don't say this. But, but the, are we, but what I'm showing them is the, the reason why you make that type of statement is because at a young age like they are now, they've been taught certain things, right? So read that again. I want to show you something. Yeah. Pro Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So the Bible said, where there is no vision, the people perish. I asked those two young men to point to Jesus. They pointed to a white man. Right? So, like a so 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 listen, mama. So like at a so at a young age, our young men have been taught a certain thing. They've been taught a certain way. Because the God of the Bible, what did he say? Give me, give me, uh, give me Leviticus 19, verse 17. Why don't I know? So I want to show you where. I want to show you what our young men learn at a young age. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So at a young age, right? A lot of our young men, they play things like Call of Duty. They play all these fighting video games. They play all this stuff, right? They throw football in our young kids' face. Uh, when they call it uh, uh, youth, youth football or something like that. Pee wee football. They put all these things in our face to have he on one team, but he on another team. So now they going against each other. They put that in our kids' head at a young age. You know, you know who else put, put, put negative thoughts in our heads as young children also? Mothers. Right. Bring it mothers. Out. Because because I don't know about you. How I was brought up. Don't need you don't need a man. Don't depend on no man. That's the way we was brought up. When, when, when women have daughters, they tell their daughters that you don't need no man. You get out here, you get your own, you grind for it. But she got a brother. And her and, and while while the mother is telling the daughter this, the brother is like, well damn. So constantly in his mind, he like. I ain't gonna serve no purpose. Right. Because mama telling my sister not to depend on a man, but I'm gonna grow up to be a man. So when I get 13, 14, I ain't gonna have no respect for women. I'm just gonna be sleeping around, sleeping around, sleeping around. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be tearing up the whole neighborhood because from a young age, mama taught my sister not to even depend on a man. Right. But the purpose of a, of a woman is to depend on a man. Right. So now when we get up in age and we start having kids, the same kids that we produce that didn't raise properly, those are the same ones that get us pregnant. We like, they just sperm don't. Right. You see that? Right, bring it out, bring it out. So, so, but if our kids knew what the Bible says at a young age, Deut uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 1. If our kids knew this at a young age, they'd grow up different. Because the men, the men that our sisters lay down with, they, a, a lot of our sisters go for I was supposed to go for the looks. He looked good. He talked good. But you don't want to meet his, you. The man, the, the woman never takes that man to their father. Why? Because that father is going to point out, you know what? He ain't no good. You need to leave him alone. But when we don't do that, okay, he looked good. He ride good. He got a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Whatever case it be, I'm going I'm to I'm lay down with him. And now you're pregnant. Now you don't know what's going on. You're like, what happened? But why does it read that? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1. So then what you got to teach your grandbabies. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord, your God, commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto... Do you know what the word diligently mean? Diligently. Can you look that up? Look up diligently. I want to show you what it means because the Bible said, what? Read again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So you got the definition? I want to show you what diligently means. And in a way that shows care and consciousness in one's work or duties. Uh, synonyms. Synonyms. Active. Bustling, employing, hopping, labor. Go, go back up to the definition. 
Definition. Characterized by steady, earnest, and energetic effort. See that? It says energetic effort. So God said that's how you got to teach the Bible to your kids. But I know people, they remember how a man when they teach their own kids something. Right up. See that? I know people like that. Whether they married, whether they just together, she can't she can't let that man go to teach her kids. So now her kids growing up. Guess how they growing up? There you go. You see what I'm saying? And the grandmother is is, 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 is past her time. She can she ain't got time to be teaching the kids nothing because our women themselves don't know what to teach the kids. Did you know that we had to teach the kids the laws of God at a young age? Did you know that? So give me Leviticus 13, 30. So there's something you got to teach the grandbabies. Because you're an example to them. So watch this. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow, thin hair, and the, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. So the Bible just said, when you got blonde hair in your head, he says unclean, right? So, so now don't, 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 don't go on the lesson. So the Bible says you have to teach your kids the commandments of God because she's going to see you with that blonde hair in your head. And eventually she's going to be one to put some of that hair in her head. You see that? That's the example. You got to set the proper example for them because when they grow up, because in a minute, he's going to be 18 by seven years. And the world ain't going to give two hoots about him. He gonna be another, shoot my life, but he gonna be another nigga around him. That's what he gonna be. The world ain't gonna give one care about him. You see what I'm saying? That's why we gotta teach them young. Because when they grow up in this society, the church ain't doing them no good. The 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 the, the, the sports world ain't doing them no good. The streets showing up ain't gonna do them no good. And they're gonna be our fault. Because you had the opportunity to teach them and you didn't. You see that? So go back, go back to uh, Leviticus 19. Let me, get, let me let me read you one more. I'm gonna let you go. Leviticus 19, because this is what you're doing. Matter of fact, 1929, 1929, because this is what you could possibly do to her, right? By another male that the previous generation didn't raise up right. The same, the, the same way they didn't raise them right back in the past, or the same way they raised them to this day. So watch this. Read it. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You see what the Bible says? The Bible says don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to become a whore. Right? So what is the way we think prostitute is you're out on the corner. Right? No, it's not. Prostituting your daughter is allowing her to wear pants. Is allowing her to wear them skin tights. Is allowing her to put weave in her hair at a young age. That's you, that's you getting your daughter ready for when she turned 18. The hips been spread a little bit. The, the chest came out some. And now she ready for any time digging hair right here. So you got a job. You, you got a big job to do. Guess what? You got to take the blonde hair out your head so you can show them how to be raised properly. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do, sis. She gonna stay blind? Well, don't be don't be upset when your kids grow up to be game numbers and whores. You can't you can't get mad. You can't get mad at that, sister, because you you are not the exception to the rule. A lot of our people think they're the exception to the rule. You're not. You're not the exception to the rule. You have to raise your children right. under the laws of God. Read that again. You're running six and seven. You gotta teach your kids according to the laws of God. God give us the recipe. God gives us the recipe. Through his son, because the Bible is the word of God. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. See so that in the Bible says you gotta teach the laws of God to your children. You see when that Leviticus 19 came out, she felt some type of way about it. Because she knows deep down in her mind, that's where her grandbaby gonna go. Because her herself, she don't know any better. She said, I'm gonna keep the blonde hair in my head. I'm gonna keep wearing these pants. So guess what? When your daughter, when your grandbaby go up, grow up busting it open for every man in the neighborhood, don't get mad. You said she threw the fly out of the window, right? From, 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 your, from your ears, from your mouth to God's ears. It ain't nothing for us.
nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models.